Folks at home, welcome back to the Backyard Bass Pond. We got a lot of exciting stuff going on right now. Our pet bass just got done spawning. We're going to be updating you on that here shortly. But first, let's take a sneak peek at some new guests that showed up at the pond. That's right, the toads are back. So if you watched our channel about this time last year, the toads invaded the pond and we got a really cool underwater shot of Bonnie attempting to eat two mating toads. But they played possum for a minute and acted like they were dying down on the bottom of the pond. Bonnie swam away and they made their escape. So I had to have a little bit of fun with it, so this is a shout out to all you mating toads out there. So that's what happened at the surface level of the pond, but now let's take a look at how the fish reacted. So as we all know, Bonnie's had some history with the toads, but our new pet bluegill that we call Jekyll is also very interested. And a lot of people may not believe that bluegills will eat frogs or toads, but we have proof of Sheriff eating a frog back in the day. She will not eat it. Wait, the bluegill ate it. So they both seem pretty interested in the toads. Neither one of them is really committed just yet. You can tell Bonnie's starting to get a little bit anxious and a little bit hungry. So she takes a swipe at the first two toads, but wasn't really fully committed and they got away. Now I'm pretty sure they put off some sort of repellent. Watch how Bonnie reacts after she strikes those. You can tell something's a little bit different with her. But folks, we had two toads that were mating right there on top of the lily pad. So I set a camera up just in case this happened. And it is an incredible shot. This is what all fishermen dream of. A big top water blow up of frogs on top of lily pads. Let's watch Bonnie in action. <laughs> that is unbelievable. She even knocked the shiners up out of the water. So now it's time for a spawning update on our two pet bass, Bonnie and Clyde. So if you didn't watch our last few videos on the spawn, I would highly recommend you go watch them because I learned a lot. I put a lot of underwater footage in there that really showed the full picture of the spawning process and all the different elements that fish have to deal with during the spawn. But I watched that spawn in that area really close the few days after Bonnie laid her eggs and we never saw any fry, which basically means that Clyde didn't fertilize the eggs. So that was pretty much a failed attempt, but something very interesting started happening right after that. I I think Clyde started feeling bad so he started trying to ease out of his cave but he also started getting bullied a little bit by the bluegills. Well shortly after that things took a turn for the bass and this is where it gets interesting. Clyde finally started stepping up and bullying the bluegill back a little bit. And you could tell Bonnie definitely got interested again. And as soon as he ran the bluegill off, they kind of paired back up and it's Bonnie and Clyde all over again. So here's something really interesting. Female bass normally don't lay all their eggs in one nest throughout the spawn. So there is still a potential that they could spawn this year, but you can definitely tell that after the bluegills were out of the picture, they kind of teamed back up as a combo. So I'll be watching them closely to see if anything happens over the next few days.
All right, folks, time to do some feeding. So Bonnie actually laid her eggs on Mother's Day last Sunday, and one of the most liked comments we got from Micah said, you better give Bonnie some Mother's Day shiners. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I went out and bought some bigger shiners than we typically put in this pond. So we're gonna feed her really good to help out with that stressful week, and we're also gonna feed the bluegills. This is what I call bulking season. Right after the spawn, we're gonna try to fatten everybody up. We got some high protein pellet feed for all the bluegills. Time to watch them eat. All right, so let's take a look at these. This is one step up in the size, and you can tell they're definitely a little bit bigger. Perfect bass snacks. Let's go ahead and drop them in. All right, folks, in case you guys are new to the channel, this is our 300 gallon aquarium with big boy Moby right here. We're gonna try to do a little hand feeding tonight. It's always a dangerous idea with this guy. Hand feed him. Ooh, yep. He likes them. All right, shiner number two. Got him, that one actually slipped out of my hand. I don't think he actually got him. Shiner number three. Oh, we definitely got fingers on that one. All right, time for a big one. Got him. All right, last one for the night, baby. Definitely drew some blood on that last one. He's not Moby the whale, he's Moby the shark. So this is what happens when toads come to the pond. You get thousands of little baby tadpoles swimming around, which isn't the worst thing. They actually feed the bluegills and crappie and catfish. But eventually they're gonna turn into little baby toads and hop out of the pond. It won't take long before that happens. But just like with the bass fry, many of the tadpoles will never make it to a small toad because of all the predators. Now let's take a look at our turtle ranger. Nobody is happier on feeding day than him. He literally racks up. Ranger down there, eating him a little snack. So you see a couple of them died down there on the bottom, but that's perfect because we got catfish and ranger, which ranger has no problem catching them alive. He's pretty quick. 
bottom feeder. All right, the start of bulking season was a success. Everybody's got full bellies. We got a few left dead down there on the bottom. That'll be for Shadow the Catfish whenever he comes out tonight. And in case you missed the last video, we're building a second backyard pond on June the 15th. And we're going to put the five Ninja Turtles in it as well as Moby. And a lot of you were concerned in the last video about Moby eating the turtles. I think by the time that comes around, when Moby actually gets put in, the turtles are going to be big enough to where he can't even fit them in his mouth. So I think we're good on that. But keep leaving your comments down below. We got a lot of good feedback on ideas that you would like to see in that next pond build. But make sure you're subscribed to follow along with the spawn and the new builds. And we hope you all enjoyed this video and we will see you all next time. Bonnie and Clyde were pretty looking people. But I can tell you people, they were the devil's children.